This program is brought to you by Emory University. Fundamentally, the, the drugs that we use today are, are very similar to the drugs that we've used since the 1980s. 1983 was the, uh, the, drug, the drug that revolutionized transplantation, cyclosporin, was introduced. Since then, that class of drugs, another drug very similar to it, have been the cornerstone, the foundation of immunosuppression. So it's been since 1983, uh, since we've had a new drug that has formed the foundation of, of transplant, uh, preventing transplant rejection. The first drug that we started to work with was CTLA-4IG. That was that fusion protein that blocked the immune system. And that proved to be very effective in uh, experimental systems in mice. Uh, short courses of that treatment could lead to very prolonged survival of, of mouse transplants in, in mice. Um, of course, what we really wanted was a drug that was effective in people. And so we began to explore that same drug um, at the Yerkes Primate Center. And um, in those experiments, um, we were very disappointed to find that that drug, CTLA-4IG, had, had really minimal effects uh, in preventing uh, transplant rejection. So that led to an effort to really understand the biology a little bit better and to see if we could come up with alternatives. So again, working with scientists at, at Bristol-Myers, uh, Peter Lindsley and, and Robert Peach, we started to understand how effective that drug was at blocking the immune system. Did it bind tightly enough to, to block the immune system? And it, and it turned out, in retrospect, it didn't bind very tightly to the target that it needed to. And so an effort was undertaken to see if we could introduce mutations or changes in that drug to change its binding characteristics. And it turned out one of those, called LEA29Y, which subsequently became Belatacept, bound much better to its targets. And so at similar doses, it would have 10 times the effect um, in in vitro or test tube studies. And it was that drug that we went back and tested in the primate. Um, and there, uh, the, the effects were, were much more marked. Um, and so it appeared that it could be an alternative to the cyclosporin class of drugs. So Belatacept was a, a second generation version of CTLA-4IG. The cells of the immune system that cause rejection are called T cells, and they need to get two signals um, to become activated and cause that immune response. They need to recognize things as foreign, that's the T cell receptor. And then they also get the second signals, which we call co-stimulatory signals. If a T cell gets both of, both of those, it'll expand, divide, and, and attack the, the, the transplant. If you deprive the T cell of those co-stimulatory signals with a co-stimulation blocker, that's what Belatacept is, then it'll get the recognition signal, but not the second signal or co-stimulatory signal. And then they won't become fully activated. In fact, most of those T cells will go on to die. Um, and so that allows us to prevent the immune response specifically to the transplant. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.